So this week we will uh, learn that how we can manage the relational database uh, in Python. And the, the reason is because uh, in reality, we don't um, open the database like as we did and do everything manually. So instead, we are using different programming language that we can automate some process. So for example, if we want to insert some data into our database, uh, we are not going to write those Python code manually each time to insert each individual uh, student's records, but instead we are using Python to do those uh, work. And we all have learned Python from last semester, so this semester is a time that you will see that how Python can help us simplify those work. Okay, uh, so before I start, I want to show you that how we are going to set up the Python environment. Uh, so we are going to use AWS Educate Classroom, which provides the online Python editor. And specifically, uh, we are using the Python editor called Drupy Notebook. Uh, so if you took my uh, Python class last semester, so you should have learned that you should already be familiar with that editor. Okay, uh, so here, this is the interface of AWS Educator. So, um, and this time you should have already enrolled into that classroom. So let me just uh, sign into AWS Educate. And I'm going to use my demo account, which is my Gmail. And, but you are using your GMU uh, account. And once you logged in, you will see the interface of AWS Educator. Um, so if this is your first time, so just give you a very quick uh, view of the educator. So in your classroom, you can see all the enrolled classrooms. And you should go to the classroom of this class, uh, which is um, data mining modeling and also knowledge discovery in database. Oh, sorry, not that one. Um, Yeah, this one, data managing, data mining, modeling, and also knowledge discovery. And you can see this online class will be expired uh, by the end of this year. But that, and you already have uh, $50. Okay, and so to do the lab that for this class. And you can also finish your portfolio if you like. Um, and they also create pathways. So those are some free online modules that you can take and you can receive the uh, certification that from AWS once you finish those online modules. Um, and also badges, so those are the kind of the quick trainings that for a specific topic. And you can also receive the uh, certifications once you complete those stuff. Uh, educate account where you can search your uh, jobs and also you can find out the jobs that looking for some people that could have uh, the AWS related skills. The AWS, AWS account, this is where you can access your starter account credits. Uh, I think you should have at least 100 credits that remaining each year, which will be renewed. So um, that is that those are the credits that you can use that by using this starter account. Okay, so for this class, let's go back to my classrooms. And uh, let's go to a data mining and also modeling class and continue. And now you are seeing that uh, you have $50, that, uh, remaining $50, that is for this entire semester. And next, let's go to the AWS console. So that will bring you to the, the same interface as uh, uh, the full privilege AWS account. Uh, however, there are limitations, so you cannot use all the services. You can only use some services that are free. So one service that we are going to use is called SageMaker. So SageMaker is a service that for machine learning and uh, we are using that one because it supports uh, Jupyter Notebook. So that is a, a, a 
very popular Python editor nowadays. So if you cannot find that SageMaker here, you can just simply type SageMaker. And so we're going to use that service. Okay, uh, so here you can see in your notebook instance, so you should, we should have zero instances right now. And um, before we start, um, um, before we start, I also want to introduce another website which is called GitHub. So, uh, if you again, if you took my uh, machine uh, Python class last semester, you should already have a GitHub account that is here, uh, gitub.com. So, this is where uh, you can find out a lot of um, open um, code that in Python, in Java that shared by uh, the programmers all over the world. So uh, if you have your GitHub account, please sign in with your GitHub. Uh, if not, please sign up with a GitHub account. So remember that uh, the email can be any email that you like, so you don't need necessarily to use your GMU email. Uh, so here I'm using my Gmail. Okay, uh, so you can pause the video here and also you can create your GitHub account. And once you're ready and we can start together. Okay, so let me sign in with my GitHub account. Okay, and once you signed in, and so if you go to your profile, so you can see here I have several repositories. Um, so I want you to create uh, one repository for this class. Uh, so we can call it I314. So just as you did in the I241. Okay, so let's create a new repository. And we call it I314. And description. So this is a demo for my I314. So I highly recommend that you create this repository for you so that later on uh, when you and also it is required by the way so later on when you want to check your code that you have created so you can go to github uh, and also if you are looking for intern you can share your github repository to your um, um, employers so that you can demo that what kind of skills that you have learned Make sure this is public uh, because private is not free. And we're going to add a readme file. And we're going to add an git ignore file. And the template should be, we can choose Python because we're going to use Python a lot. And also you can choose a license. Uh, so normally the most common one is MIT. So that if you want, if you have created something that very great, and you, you can claim the, the right copyright. And next, let's create this repository. Okay, great. So this rep repository has been created. Uh, so you can see by default, we have a readme file. And uh, if you click this pencil, uh, you can add it to the readme files, so like you can add author name, Etc. and also that follows a markdown syntax. Um, okay. And also you can see add it to the license. So it, this is a standard MIT license and you can also of course edit the license, etc. Um, and also we have an ignore file. So git ignore file. So that means that all those files that will be ignored. Okay, all the files will be ignored. So let's edit this ignore file. Uh, so on top of that, let's type hashtag ignore configure.inr file. Uh, so we are going to create a config.inr file later in our notebook, uh, which contains the um, data connection information like our password, etc. So those are sensitive information. So we don't want to share those sensitive information on GitHub. So, and now let's say configure.ini. Okay, so that file will be in now. So when you 
want to synchronize with your GitHub repository, so that file will be ignored. And next, let's commit that change. Okay, so now we have a GitHub repository. And uh, let's go to SageMaker. And before we add an instance, let's go to the Git repository. So we want to link uh, this Git repository to our uh, notebook instance. So let's say we want to add repository here. And we're using a GitHub. And here you can give it a name. So name can be any name that you like. So I340, the URL the git URL. So now if I go to my GitHub and I copy this URL, remember that you have to go to your root repository, the root of your repository, and also you copy that URL. Okay, and we paste that URL. And we can leave that as optional, so branch as optional. And next, we are going to create a secret. So the secret means that um, this will um, save your GitHub password on AWS. So remember that when you created the GitHub account, you have your account name and also your password. And so we are going to save that one here. So here I call it GitHub, GitHub password. And my username and also password. So I use my Gmail for my GitHub, and here I should type my password. And next, I say I create this secret. So this is a GitHub account and also GitHub password. And next, we are going to see add that repository. Okay, so now you can see this repository has been successfully added. And next, let's go to our notebook instance. Uh, so here we are going to create our notebook instance. So the instance will be a server that will um, uh, create and allow you to create notebooks and also execute notebooks. So let's create a notebook instance. Uh, instance name, so here I can also call it IS340. The notebook instance type. So this step is very, very important. Make sure you choose the MLT to medium because remember, you, we only have $50. So if you choose a very expensive one, a very expensive one, and you will use all your credits in probably one day. Okay, so we choose this, the cheapest one. And let's keep the other default a configuration as default one, so default additional configuration as default. And next, we're going to create a new IM role. So we're going to create a new role that allow the instance to read any data from any S3 bucket. So we just choose everything as default and create that role. And for the network, so um, it is optional, so we, we can leave that one as default. And for the GitHub repository, so if you click this drop-down list, you can see the i340 now is here. So let's choose that one as the GitHub repository. And for the tags, let's leave everything as default. And next, let's create that notebook instance. Okay, uh, so after about uh, five minutes, so now you can see that my notebook instance is now in service. Uh, so we can open that one and we can start editing and also creating our notebook. Uh, so to sum up, so first you have to log